All right, they got us on. So let's, as everybody's still coming in, let's stand up if we can. Let's stretch as everybody's connecting. Yeah. And there are rooms too over there. I know that we cannot see you from here, but in the classroom at home, let's stretch up. Let's, there you go, guys. Come on. It's like, what is he doing? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just uh, stretching times. We need to tune the guitar. <laughs> Woo, what a good day. You know what? Today is our last chapel. Well, technically, but it's not. There's one more, and it's senior chapel. Um, that's going to be next Tuesday. So um, our director, Bill, will be here with the seniors. So don't miss it. It's a really good chapel for the senior to express their heart to you. So come and hear them. And uh, this morning we're going to pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to be in a nation that we can freely pray. That we don't have to hide underground to pray. That we don't have to hide to express what we believe. That we don't, like any, like a lot of other nations, that they don't have that freedom. Help us, Lord, not to take that freedom for granted. And as we learn to be able to be those people that go and take the gospel to others. So right now we pray, Lord. We pray that today, this morning, I pray that our, our, our eyes will be open to see you. And like I pray for, for my kids every day, that, that this generation will have dreams and visions and revelation. That they will see your power. Just like Joel prophesied. Just like... Like Peter has spoken and said, yeah, this is what Joel prophesied. That they will see vision. That their eyes will be opened. That they will see the glory of God. That they will see miracles and wonder. Let this generation be an, an, a, a generation that encounter you present. A generation that choose to believe without seeing. But a generation that, that, that express and see because they're so connected to you, Lord. That they be able to see that. So, Father, I speak that you will bring those visions to them. That you will bring that as they sleep. That they will wake up and know that it was a vision from God. That they will see and encounter wonders and they will cast out demons. That's what your words say. That the, your spirit is in us so that somebody can be free. So, Father, I pray that this morning we just receive more of you as we worship you and as we listen to your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Oh, 
surely your goodness and mercy follows me. So my weapons of praise and thanksgiving, this is how I find my battles. And I be
I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Cause the God of Again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you.
for those who have Bible, you can open it in John. John 2, 13 to 16. And I'm going to read a little and then stop it. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went to, up to Jerusalem in the temple core. He found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves. And others sitting at the table exchanging money. So he made a whip out of his courts and drew all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coin of the money changer and overturned their table. To those who sold off, he said, get this out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. Father, I pray that today as we read your word, you said the faith come by hearing and hearing through your word. I pray that every student will be able to hear you, to hear you through your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. I want for you to picture this moment, okay? He, Jesus come into the temple, and as he goes inside the temple, he found people in the temple selling the dove, the sheep, and, and the cattle. And as he is now in the temple and everybody is selling coins and doing these things, he gets so upset with that scene in the temple that he make a, a whip out of his court and start whipping the, the cattle, the sheep, the doves, everything, you know, and threw the table away. So he got really upset, didn't he? And let's go back a little bit in, in, in the history of a reality was going on here. What was those doves? What was those sheep? What was those cattle for? In the Old Testament, when God wants to get closer to people because people were sinful, he said, the only way that they can come to me is if they make a sacrifice. And this sacrifice, every animal represents Jesus Christ coming. The dove represents Jesus, the cattle represent Jesus, the sheep represent Jesus. That at that time, and that particular time, it was given to the people. So the people, those that have no much money, they, will, they couldn't afford a sheep, they couldn't afford a cattle, they can afford a dove. It was cheaper, but it had to still be clean, pure, just like Jesus was going to come and be clean and pure. And they will buy that and take it to the priest, and the priest will bring a sacrifice. And through that, they will find their accept, acceptance to God. Through a dove, through a cattle, through a sheep. So it's not just craziness to see this in the temple. What it was crazy to see in the temple, that they were making a business out of it. That they were robbing the people. We're going to see that later on. We're going to read it out of another verse and how Matthew see it. <clears throat> so... Of course, he got upset because that dove represents Jesus. That sheep represents Jesus. That cattle represents Jesus. So the people can get a dove and come to God. If you look in the Old Testament, they will come to God by those things. And they will have to be clean and pure. And now Jesus is coming and finding in the temple that the people are not bringing a dove, a cattle, and a sheep to, uh, to God. But what they're doing is they're selling it. They're making a, bi a business. They're robbing the people. They're doing a business out of Christianity. They're doing a business out of acceptance. I've been a, you know, it's like people need these things so that they can come to God. And now they're selling it in the temple. In the Old Testament, it was all about that dove. It was all, all about that sheep. It was all, all about that cattle so that they can finally be accepted. And the people will bring it. And, and as the priest will bring that sacrifice and do that sacrifice, the people technically will be clean and purified. So imagine, number one is, where the people, what's, where, what's going on with them? So what that's showing me is a generation that has stopped appreciating the dog. Start 
They're not appreciating the dove as Jesus. They're not appreciating the cattle as Jesus. They're not appreciating the sheep as Jesus no more. To the point that they're selling Jesus. They're selling Jesus. Hey, you want salvation? Do whatever you want tonight. Go party, do drugs, whatever. Just tomorrow, just speak Jesus. You're good. You know, let me sell you. Give me a thousand dollars and you get a healing. Selling Jesus. That's what they were doing. The dove, the cattle, the sheep. That's what they represent. Represent something that you, they will bring it to God so they can be accepted. But Jesus Christ died in the Christ so that you and I can be accepted. So he got so mad. And, and, and look what Matthew sees. Let me read that in, out of Matthew now. It's the same story. Matthew sees the same thing. But Matthew observes something deeper that I love out of this story. And in Matthew 21, 13 say, and it is reading, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. And then this is what Matthew sees that Jesus do after he go and throw everything away, after he take all these doves and all the sheep out, and after he clean up all these people that were supposed to, Provide those things so the people can be clean. Provide those things. Kind of like maybe if our generation now start doing the same thing with Jesus. Start selling Jesus so the people can go to heaven. Or start selling miracles. Or start selling whatever. It'd be the same thing. We'll be doing the same thing just like selling a dove, a cattle, and a sheep. It'd be the same thing. So Jesus cleaned up all that mess, and this is what he does. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. That really moved my heart to this reality. Jesus cleaned up and showed everybody something. That dove was supposed to be a dove. There may be a poor people they couldn't afford. And these people, instead of giving that dove away, so that somebody can be accepted by God, they were selling it. So Jesus clean up all that mess and show everybody something so special that I hope that you see it today. He started bringing all those people in. All those people in that they were needing healing. Those people that were needing acceptance. Those people that were needing confidence. Those people that were needing uh, emotional healing. Those people that were needing freedom. All those people that were lined out and maybe they didn't have the money to pay for that animal. They will bring acceptance to God. Jesus said, don't worry about it. Come in. I accept you. So let me stop right there. If you are that person, they have been lined up. And for some reason, religion has been turning you away. Because religion has the tendency to be like those people. Religion is, is not bad. The word religion is it's, it's a, it's a worship thing. But we have turned religion in a bad way because that's why we have so many de denominations. That they all, oh, they're all good, but sometimes they contradict to each other because sometimes we're focusing on the wrong thing. Instead of we focusing on Jesus and Jesus alone, we're focusing on so many doctrines and weirdness and we're doing the same thing that these people were doing. Instead of giving people just simply a dove, a cat, and a sheep which his name is Jesus we have so much rules and what happens is people are lying, laying at the door waiting at the door for Jesus to welcome them and if you are that person today that you say Damien I, I feel inside that way I feel that because of religions I have I have I have not been able to walk in just to Jesus and be free I'm telling you today sorry I am sorry. I am sorry if we, somehow we as a minister now have shown you that you can freely come to Jesus and be free. I remember growing up having long hair, having this thing. It was like, oh no, you're, you're, you're evil. And some older lady one day came in and gave me a word. They set me free, and I didn't know how important it was for me. 
in the middle of all that religious, that they were just focusing more on the outside than the inside. Because that's what it is. People judge, judge the outside. That's, that's, that's what it is. People are, get more worried about money, more worried about, you know, making a dinner robbers, just like Jesus say. Then just like welcoming the lamb, welcoming the sick, and say, listen, come because Jesus loves you. Welcoming the hurt, welcoming the, we, we just have the tendency to be like that generation. And I remember I was one of those kids that I look at church and I look all this legalism, all these walls. And I was needing Jesus. I was a, a young kid that needed Jesus. The, the inside of me, I was broken for, for different things. And I needed Jesus. And they were judging me if I had long hair or if I have an earring in that time. Or, 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 or there were so many rules. And this woman came and said, Damien, I have a dream. And I saw you with long hair preaching in front of hundreds of youth. And I remember I was crying because it was like the first time in my whole life that somebody told me, long hair and preaching? Come on. In the middle of a legalistic church, it's, it's church that was all focused about how if you have long hair or don't have long hair. And guess what? I forgot about that. All I, all I learned in that time is like instead of focusing on the legalism, that doesn't mean that the church is evil, even though if you're there, they don't understand areas because sometimes the leader can miss it too. They still love Jesus. So I learned to just focus on Jesus. I found freedom. I grew up. I, I came to California in 1995 when I was 18 years old. And I, I got baptized there in a, in, a, in a little Spanish church in the Azusa Street in, in California. And, and, and I started leading worship at the age of 18. I was a worship leader. Because before that, I, I let worship, I say, let, not, not let worship, but I was part of worship because my mom teach music. So as a little kid, but I, at the age of 18, I become a worship leader of this church. And, and guess what? My hair was growing. <laughs> and I wasn't even realizing. You know, and all of a sudden, they invite me and I go in a youth camp and I'm in front of hundreds of youth. I have the picture of my office. I'm in front of hundreds of youth with my hair long to the shoulders. I'm preaching. And as I'm preaching in front of these hundreds of youth, I remember this lady. I spoke in that word and said, Damien, I saw you. God, show me that one day you will be out of this legalism, out of these men that are selling the gospel in their own perspective. You will be free, Damien. And not only you will be free, but you will be speaking to you so that they can be free too. If I take my hat off, today I have long hair too, and I'm speaking in front of hundreds of youth. Did I plan that? No. Two years ago, I got cancer. I lost all my hair. Sunday, it was my two years anniversary of being born again in the flesh. That's the term terminology of the doctors is they reset my whole immune system and I'm born again in the flesh and I got the blessing to baptize my kids in this in this amazing church and I had long hair and I'm speaking to you Damien what are you trying to say this is what I'm trying to say Matthew saw that Matthew saw that there was a generation that Jesus was casting out and say your deems a robber but Matthew saw something else that he didn't just focus on that generation of Dean's or Robert. He turned around and started welcoming the hurts one. The one that they were in pain. The one that they were suffering. The one that they were needing healing. And today I'm here to tell you, if you are the one hurt, Jesus is saying, come on to me. Come on to me. If you are that Damien at the age of 14, with long hair, and you feel like somehow, listen, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm telling you I'm sorry for whatever we did that we have turned you away. And I'm telling you, Jesus is saying to you today, come to me. Come to me, and I will touch you and heal you. And when I touch you and I heal you, I'm going to use you. I'm going to use you. And that's what he did. 
he started welcoming. There is not a surprise why he chose 12 broken disciples. 12 broken disciples. And he trained them and encouraged them and then sent those 12, 11, because one decided to go the opposite way, which that showed me. What happened if we deny Jesus? Well, if we disobey, we have consequences. If we obey, we have consequences. If we obey, we have great blessings. If we disobey, we don't. But the amazing thing about Jesus is he's not selling the gospel. He gave it for free. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to save you and save me. He welcomed me as he's welcoming you. He's welcoming you. Now, if you somehow are, which I'm speaking to a crowd, if you somehow we as a teacher have become these insensitive people that, that, that instead of giving Jesus away, I encourage you that please let us not become, let us not become that generation that is selling doves and selling cattle and sheep when we can just give it away freely. The Bible does say, freely we receive, freely we give. But for you, younger generation, I'm telling you, please don't become like that generation either. Please don't become that generation of so many doctrines and legalism. Jesus. Jesus. Because at some point, Jesus is going to come and wipe up the tables and I hope that we become the generation that is more concerned about sharing about Jesus than selling Jesus. There are four things that I want to share with you that you and I can do. Five things, actually. That we can do so that every day when we go to church, every day of our walk, it will help us so that we don't become that generation that is insensitive of Jesus. Because that's what happened. They become insensitive that that dove, cattle, and sheep could have been, it was, the way to God. And they were so insensitive that outside there were lambs, there were, pe there were people in need, and they were more focused about their business. Please, let's not become the Americans that we are so blessed. Listen, we live in a blessed nation. Let's use the blessing not to become insensitive to the need of others. Because if we become insensitive of the need of others, Jesus will do the same thing that he did in the temple. He will wipe out the temple and start welcoming the needy and healing it himself. We have such an amazing blessing to be in this country, in this nation. But let's not become insensitive of it. So five things that we can do as a person so that we don't become insensitive. The number one I'm going to show you with the Bible. We need to still believe that he is. That he's moving. In Hebrew 11.6 says, And without faith it's impossible to please God. If you don't believe that he is who he is, it's impossible to please him. So this is what I say. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder for those who earnestly seek him. So when you wake up in the morning, do you still believe that God is there? When you come, go to your church, are you believing? Because that was part of my issue. It's so easy today to point at the church and say, it was their fault. That I was so messed up. No, I wasn't. Yes, the, well, they, well, they focusing about my long hair. Yeah, but there was still a church that read the Bible. So it's time for us to be free. What that means is if in your church, for example, uh, believe in not playing music and singing, that's fine. Just sing without music. What's the whole point? If, he, if he, you're... you're your church is like, uh, I don't know. I know that I'm speaking to different denominations. Awesome. We all believe in Jesus. What I'm saying is, if you believe that God is who he is, 
If you believe the guy is who he is and seek him, he's a rewarder for those that diligently seek him. So don't wait. Don't wait to see something. Start believing and seek him. He's a rewarder. Do you want to see God move? Seek him. Do you want to see God move? Seek him. Don't wait until he moves for you to seek. Start seeking him. Open, read the Bible, wake up in the morning and say, God, I might not feel it, but I believe what your word say. The, in Hebrew 11, 6 say, and without faith, it's impossible to please you. So I want you. I need you. That's what that woman bring with that word. It's like, Damien, listen, don't worry about it right now, the long hair. I'm God, and if you believe in me, one day I'm even going to use you with the long hair. So that church, you know what? A lot of the things that I know today is because thankful of that church. We have Sunday school. I know all the stories that I know of the Bible. It was because of Sunday school. So even though that today I started the message by sharing the legalistic things of that church, guess what? In the moment that I start believing that God is who he is, there was no limitation anymore. If you believe that God is who he is, you can be to the most legalist church, you are going to see God move. Why? Because that's what the Bible say. It's up to you, not to your community church. It's up to you. The Bible say, if you believe you're pleasing him, if you believe he will reward you. So one of the number one things that we can do is if those people would have believed that that dog was the solution for that person that couldn't walk. If they would have believed that that dog was the solution for those people outside the temple. They might have given it away. But they stopped believing. So now they're selling it. If you and I don't believe in God, of course we're going to feel, we're going to put our eyes on, on the legalistic church. We're going to put our eyes on the pastor and what he does right or wrong. Listen, I'm not perfect. You can look at me and see all the imperfection. You can listen to my message and start correcting everything that I say because you're going to have a different opinion on what I say. But the problem is you're missing it. It's not about me. It's not about my opinion. It's about the word of God. And if you come with that attitude, you're going you're gonna to look at what God is saying instead of correcting me all the time. So don't miss it for yourself. See God. I go to several churches and several preachers that I disagree with things. But if I focus on that, I'm going to be missing what God is saying. For example... If you're sitting down with a crazy man, you learn not to be crazy. We, we can be learning out of things instead of getting so caught up. The Bible says, if you seek him, he will reward you. So that's the number one thing we need to start doing is believing again that he is who he is. And when you do that, every morning you wake up, it's like, wow, God, thank you for this day. Help me to seek you with all my heart. Because you'll be my rewarder today. Number two, because time is going. John 10, 27 to 28 says this. My sheep listen to my voice and I know them. And they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. He had the whole world. In his hand, he had the whole world. In his hand. Well, this is the second point, okay? You must believe that God is still speaking. You must. If you don't believe that God is still speaking, why do we even have chapel? If you don't believe that God is still speaking, why do you read the Bible? If you don't believe that God is still speaking, why do you go to church? Well, Damien, that's the whole point. I don't even know why I go to church. Listen, I've, I've been there. My parents make me go to church in a, in a certain time of my life. And I'm so thankful because then I learned this. My, sheeps, my sheep know my voice, God said. And I know them. What did that say? Right there it says. It's right there. I like to prove things with the Bible. There are different opinions. But the Bible say that God himself said that we are in his hands and we 
know his voice and he speaks. So but God is still speaking. Listen, if you start being the person that always understand that he is who he is. And then number two, you understand that he speaks. You're going to start looking at him and seeking him. And it's so, it's so needed because when things doesn't go your way, that's the best thing to believe that he still speaks. So when, when something tragic is happening in your home, tragedy is happening around you, you know, instead of pouting because of our lack of theology, we run to God and say, God, I don't understand, but I know that you speak, so speak to me. And you know what? Through his work, he does. When my kids were diagnosed as a young age of cystic fibrosis and, and we believe in the power of God healing them and pray for them and, 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 and it, the healing ended up coming, but it took a, a process. Our sick of, like we were seeking God and God gave us Jeremiah 29, 11 and say, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, and it's to have hope and a good future. In that moment, I knew that it, that verse was saying, I know the plans that I have for your son and it's to have hope and a good future. That was seven, eight years ago, and God had brought healing to my kids in those areas just by trusting that he's still speaking. See, when we go to church and we understand that he's speaking, we put the phone down. When we go to our classroom and we understand that God is still speaking, nobody had to tell us to turn our cell phone off. We have lost the respect of God. Just like those people did. And it's so easy to point on the leadership and what the pastors and the, everybody's doing wrong. Instead of pointing at our heart and asking this question. That I still believe that he is who he is. That I still believe that he speak. Your Sundays when you go to church is going to be different. If you believe that he still speak. But something happened that we have lost that respect of the word of God. That respect. It's nobody else's fault. It's our fault. It's our fault. And it's time for you and I to understand that Jesus is saying, come. 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 I receive you. And what do we need to change? And I'm going to stop in those two things. Start believing again that he is who he is. Whatever it is that have took that belief out of you, maybe a tragedy, maybe something happened, maybe you're waiting for a supernatural encounter. It's time for you to understand that those that seek him will see him. You will see his. You will see him move. You will see him doing something. So start seeking him. Open the word of God. Start reading again. Stop Push your flesh away of getting distracted when you go to church, when you go to chapel, when you go to your classroom. Listen to your teachers. Obey. Even when you don't understand, sooner or later, you're going to remember. You're going to remember that teacher that teach you math. You're going to remember that teacher that teach you language. You're going to remember the teacher and you're going to say, thank you. I didn't understand at that time. This See, I'm thankful of those teachers that even they were pointing at my long hair because even though that they would have a lack of knowledge in that area because of that season in their life, they were teaching me the Bible. And today I know the Bible because of that teacher. One day you're going to understand, but everything is star and how is your heart. If you believe that he is who he is, you're going to respect God when you wake up in the morning. You're going to respect God when nobody else sees you and somebody is offering you to smoke pot. Or somebody is offering you to do something that you shouldn't do. You, if you believe that he is who he is, you don't need a law. Because love will take you to do the right thing. If you believe that he is who he is, and you believe that he still speaks, I just show you with the Bible that he does. He still speak. He still speak through his word. And I bet you that the church that you go, they read the word of God. Don't they? They read out of the Bible. And that's my next verse. Romans says, say, faith come by hearing and hearing come through his word. So God speaks. He speaks. So if you believe that, if you believe that, then you will not become that generation that is insensitive 
of who Jesus is. Father, I thank you for chapel. I thank you for every student that today you're saying, come to me. Come to me. Come to me and be free. I want to heal you. I want to restore you. I want to touch you. You are welcome. You are welcome, Jesus say. If illegalism puts you away, somehow Jesus is saying, I'm wiping all these things out of your life. I'm wiping all these things out of my temple, which is you. We are the temple now. He's wiping all these things and he's saying, come, I will touch you. Come, I will heal you. Come, I will restore you. Father, help them to believe that you are who you are because they will see the reward. And help them to understand that you know them. You have their life in your hands. But help us to understand that you're speaking so that our life is different from now on. That we are respecting again when we go to church, when we wake up in the morning, that we are respecting the Bible. That we're not taking it for granted no more. There's so many people that they cannot even have a Bible. We have plenty of Bibles in, in, in hotels and everywhere in the United States. Help us to understand and respect that through those Bibles you are speaking and that you want to speak to us. And not only to us, that you want to use us to speak to others. Help us not to become insensitive of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you for this amazing year of letting me speak to your life. And I hope that you don't take for granted what God is saying. Just simply, if it's anything, if it's anything, I hope that you know that Jesus loves you and he wants to speak to you. So have a blessed day.